I'm coming, I'm coming, hold on, I'm coming! Cuckoo! 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 I'm coming, I'm coming. I know, it's a little early. I'm hungry, you said we were meeting for breakfast. Why are we at No, 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 no. Not eating, not meeting for breakfast. This is a taped episode of something for some, for, we're meeting to talk about food cycles. But I want, but food cycling through like my mouth into my stomach, No, no, right? no, 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 no. It's not your oh, food cycle. On. After this, we'll go grab breakfast, okay, right? I After this, we'll go breakfast. grab breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody doing today? It's so nice to see you. Yes, this is a taped episode of your zoo adventures. Steve's in front of the camera today. Leslie's behind. Hey! Um, so we're very happy you guys are here with us today. It's cold. My mouth's not quite working very well. So thank you so much for tuning in. And it is. We're going to go through something kind of cool today. We're going to talk about the food cycle. I don't know if that's a real thing or not, kind of made it up, but here at the zoo, we do the whole thing for our animals here at the zoo. We grow the food, we prepare the diets, we feed it out, they poop it out, we pick it up, and then we compost it and use the compost to grow the food again. It's the whole cycle. We've seen parts of this throughout the year. We thought, let's put it all together in one episode, and that's what we're going to do today. And I'm not mistaken, I see Katie over here. She's at Greenhouse 3. We've taken you behind the scenes again. Hey, you guys remember Katie? Katie helped us out with our two Hort episodes earlier, our Browse episode and um, the Greenhouses episode. So it's great to see you again, Katie. We're going to come over and visit with you. You remember the Muppet. Slowly You've met the Muppet. Surely, oh, of Slowly but surely. <laughs> so you've met the Muppet before. Oh, yes. And some of us have seen some of this before, but we thought, we're going to go see compost later. We're going to go uh -huh. check out kind of how this is done. But we're going to start with the food and how it begins and where it grows. So Perfect we timing. Yeah, okay. I just cut gorilla breakfast for tomorrow. Oh, sweet. <laughs> breakfast? No? Not breakfast? I mean... Not breakfast? If I have to. Oh, there goes Diego. Oh! Digital guests, it's warm in here. This is awesome. So this is where the magic starts. Yes. This is where everything begins. So we're creating food for animals and we grow some of it here at the zoo. Correct. Um, and this house is just dedicated to brows. Brows, remember brows? Mm -hmm. Animals that are going up and kind of reaching a little higher for it, eating out of the trees and bushes. So we can't always provide trees and bushes. These guys, the horticulture staff, like Katie, grow it and the keepers can use it in their habitats that's right we have a bunch of bananas those are bananas yeah wow I need those breakfast. that was that's a great point leslie it's a breakfast food <laughs> oh yeah and we mix up the soil and we actually use the compost from george's pile to add oh, to our so media cool. and to fertilize get this we're going to meet george a little bit later i don't know if he knows it yet or not uh, okay. <laughs> but we're going to meet george <laughs> And he's gonna talk, hopefully, he's gonna talk about how this is, how this is all done. So, but you use that here. That's right. That and we so also cool. make compost tea to fertilize our brows also. Because, you know, it has all wait, sorts wait, wait, of wait, 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 wait. You can't just go past compost tea <laughs> and keep going. Leslie, I know you're a, you're kind of a, you're like a drink drinky. Instead of a foodie, you're a drinky. I like tea. You do. I don't how about know compost that, tea? I don't, mm -hmm. No? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pass. So, I'm, I'm sorry, Katie, you have to explain what compost tea is. Well, compost no tea is you just take a couple scoops of compost okay. and you put it in a bucket of water and dilute okay. it. And that is full of all sorts of good micronutrients Whoa. and minerals okay. that you just don't get naturally in, you know, prepared soil mixes. Gotcha. So, we add that as extra fertilizer to juice up our plants and make them grow and thrive. Wow. So it's kind of like a water? It looks like mud water. Mud water. It looks like mud water. <laughs> mud water works. That'll work. Cool. So what else you have in here today? We have the Aphromoma. You guys remember what the Aphromomum is? Who eats the Aphromomum primarily? You guys remember? Oh. You guys remember? Got a little cheat over there. 
Yeah, the gorillas. That's one of their primary browse items here at the zoo. And we grow it here. Which one is the Aframoma? It's this long leafed one this right one? here. We have seven different species here. And in this house, wow. we cut it and prepare it. Well, we don't always prepare all the food, but we cut the aframomum daily for the gorillas and the, the giraffes and the chimps. Wow. I didn't realize there were seven species. Aframomum? Yes. In various stages of production. Wow. You know, we have some little ones, we have some big ones. And, the, and, and we grow this here. That's right. How does it, that's kind of a silly question. How do you start growing aframomum or banana plant? Is it a seed? Is it what? You can grow it from seed, wow. um, but often we do a combination of seed and propagating by division. Oh, cool. Okay. Meaning you're taking a plant and breaking it apart into more baby plants. No kidding. And so, the, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, and I was going to say, we also grow aquatic brows in this house also for aquatic. the ducks and flamingos. Oh, really? Yeah. Who, who knew, right? So you're growing at aquatic brows even for them to be able to munch on and find their own food. So since it's all about f growing food, and then feeding it out. What other kinds of things do you guys grow for the animal population here at the zoo? Well, we have the browse garden that's yeah. full of all the various trees. That was the tree, okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have the vegetable garden there. Oh, we do. Where we grow lettuces and we grow strawberries and other seasonal vegetables. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So there's a lot of stuff going on here yeah. that horticulture is growing up and then sharing with the animal team. Yeah. Love the teamwork, love the teamwork. So a lot of times we'll just, if we have extra something, we'll just take it right over to commissary and oh, they no can kidding. help, uh, you know, divvy it up and prepare it. I love it, that's cool. And as a matter of fact, that's kind of a nice little segue. I think we're gonna go over and check out how some of the food here is prepped and then fed out. Oh, Thanks, Katie, cool. thank you no so much. No problem. Oh shoot, hey guys, uh, before I go in, let me tell you where we're headed. We're at the commissary today and remember talking about the food cycle? Some of the diets are made in here and John is here to show us one of the foods that's, that's actually grown at the zoo they use in the diets. Check this out. All about food cycles. Oh, there's John. Hey, Hello. here's John. You said, we got some really cool things to talk about. You're coming this way? You're following me? You're following me? What are you doing? Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, you want to get him working. I see how it is. I'll keep coming. I'll keep coming. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want to interfere too much with what John's doing. So, John. Yes. What are you doing? I'm chopping up uh, romaine lettuce. You're chopping up romaine lettuce. Yes. You're doing a great job, by the way. Thank you. Absolutely. But uh, I think I told you, we're, talk we're filming about the food cycle. Yes. And you said this is one of the foods that's actually grown at the zoo. That's correct. That is so neat. What kind of animals might get romaine lettuce here at the zoo? Oh, man, everything from primates down to the skunk. Oh, really? Uh, turtles. So it's good that it's grown here. Romaine. That's kind of cool then, because yes. that means that it's one of those foods that has that true cycle. Yes. It's all done in the park. Right. That is so neat. And of course, I love uh, it. the giraffes love the romaine. Uh, the have you deck. ever come to the draft deck? Uh -huh. Have you ever come to the draft deck and fed out some romaine lettuce to the giraffes? Great point. That's yes. awesome. Right here. How cool is that? Are, is there, are there any other foods that you know of? Because in the commissary, you're putting the diets together. Correct. That the keepers use that rely on compost at the uh, zoo? Browse. Uh, okay. Definitely browse. Uh, we well, do, check that out. We do grow herbs in the garden. Uh, oh, we George, do grow some herbs. Yeah, George grows some herbs. Uh, so cool. that's used. And then Hort use it all over park for uh, all of our mulching. Plants oh, are yeah. uh, grown in it, so we are using it all over the park. Yeah, that makes sense. So even though we're talking about food today, that compost, we don't have to be out and get it. It's still here, so it's still being used in a different way. Exactly. Not just for this kind of thing, yep. but to make sure the park looks amazingly beautiful for you guys when you come for a visit. That is so neat. And then any scraps that we have, anything that's bad from, if we have a bad head of uh, romaine, goes into compost, gets cycled back around. Oh, golly. I didn't even think about that. Yep. So anything that's still, it's kind of like you said, waste or not being used in the moment. Yep. It can still be used exactly. to create something new. Exactly. That is so cool. Awesome. John, thank you so much. You're this has been cool. 
I know it's been quick and easy, so thanks for your time. No but it was neat that you said you, you were actually working on something from, an, from processed food, mm -mm, from food that is processed in the commissary that's grown here at North Carolina. Yes, Group. exactly. What an amazing thing. And it's all in the zoo. How cool is that? We have more to see. Check this out. This is so cool. Guys, remember Kiefer Ashley. She's been with us a few times in the past. This is so neat. Remember, we're talking about food cycle kind of thing here at the North Carolina Zoo. How we grow some of the food and we prep some of the food. We feed out some of the food. And that's what we're here for today. We're, right now, we're feeding out some brows to the bison. How often do you do this, Ashley? We do this when we can. Um, it just kind of depends on what's going on in our week. Right. Um, so this week, um, they'll get lots of brows because we have our bamboo with us, but we also have um, our extra brows um, as well. We have um, extra, I guess right now in the winter, it's a little difficult to grow some brows. I know that yeah. um, we came from the greenhouses and they do grow a lot of different brows, mm -hmm. but I guess right now it's a little difficult to keep all that brows going for the animals like you might, might need. Yeah, usually if we're going to bring out brows to these guys, we go out in the woods. Um, and as you can see, our <laughs> woods are mostly brown They're right now. They're a little brown. Yeah, they are. Um, so there's a lot of different things that they can eat, things that are considered safe brows. Sure. Or what we call browsable. Oh, um, nice word. Browsables. So a lot of those things, though, are trees that drop their leaves for um, the fall and the winter. Gotcha. We don't have access to those, so right. we will, if we are going to get brows, it's usually going to be something like bamboo. Um, there's also wax myrtle around the park oh, cool. um, and iliagnus. Nice. Those are mostly what's going to be green in the winter. Whoa. Um, and then our bonus brows. Yeah, because we actually purchased some brows mm -hmm. because it's really important, and that's something that you guys need to be aware of, it's really important that a lot of the animals are getting that browse, getting that fresh mm -hmm. green as much as they can. So although we can't grow it all here at the North Carolina Zoo, we are able to get some browse brought into us. Mm -hmm. We purchase it and they send it to us. It's kind of weird to think that we're getting browse sent to us. Mm -hmm. But in the winter time, it's really important. Yeah, definitely good for them. Um, it's going to you know, have a little bit different nutritional value than sure. like already dried hay, um, which they get throughout the year. but. Um, during this time of the year, we feed out more of it. So like today, nice. we fed out three bales of Timothy. Three? In the summer, we might not feed hardly any Timothy. Um, yep. Oh, I see. Ooh, we got an elk coming on here Tommy right there. Tommy wants some brows. Tommy wants some brows too. I'm try to occupy him over here. <laughs> this is so cool. Well, that's kind of fun. So that's who's here, right? We have the bison and the elk in this habitat. Mm -hmm. So we're back on the, the prairie habitat here at the zoo. That's a great yeah. shot. What are you getting? I'm going to look over the camera, look and see what Leslie's getting. That's a great shot, Leslie. Mm -hmm. Hit the poor elk with the brass. Oh, no. <laughs> so do, do these guys get fed this kind of browse um, even in the fall and even in the summer? Is that what you were saying a second ago? You guys go out and actually cut it even yeah. for, for both these species? Yeah, and that'll be... Um, he looks really good. <laughs> easier for us in the spring and the summer. Um, they would have green grass out here as well. Oh, sure. um, but that browse is much more plentiful um, in the spring and summer. Nice. Um, so right now it's at least uh, once a week because we do order it. Right, right, right. Um, but then we can go out and cut it if we have time. Do they have a favorite? That's kind of an unfair question because you didn't know it was coming. Do they have a favorite browse? Um, they all seem to like things a little differently. Oh, so do they? Really? Some animals like things more than others. Um, okay. Grapevine is pretty popular with the animals. Um, which is grape vine. Uh, Interesting. Like, like muscadine vine grows native here. <laughs> That's um, a great shot. So it's also fun for them to play with. So when Tommy has antlers, sometimes he will wrestle with oh, the browse, cool. which is pretty cute too. So not just food, it's enrichment as well. Mm -hmm, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Good deal. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for letting us come out and get so close again to the bison and elk. Thanks to Tommy and your other bison friends here uh, for coming out and visiting with us. Yeah, and cool. Digital Guest, we got a little bit more to share with you. Hang on. Hey, you want to take this? Take your antlers over. Leslie, watch where you're walking. <laughs> Leslie, be careful. I'm going to make sure I'm not stepping anything. It's very hard because <laughs> there is lots of little There's a lot. A lot of little pellets. <laughs> a little poop pellets. Yes. Well, as you mentioned, as we know, guys, we're talking about the whole food cycle here at the zoo. And we were showing that the animals that were eating the browse that's been grown here. Um, and then Keeper actually said that she had to go clean. And we we're like, huh, clean? And following up the food, this is perfect. So although it's like, Steve, it's a little after 10 in the morning and you're showing Ashley picking up poop. <laughs> it's part of the 
cycle here at the zoo. And Ashley, you and your team will, will pick this up and then you'll actually take this and dump it at the compost pile. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. So all of it stays in the park. So that entire cycle from growing the food, prepping the diets, feeding it out, cleaning up the poop, having the animals poop, mm -hmm. and then grow it again happens all within the, the zoo's fences. Yeah. That is so cool. And this is daily for you? Uh, yeah, for the most part. Um, hoof stock in general are not the messiest animals. So <laughs> um, something like this whole area won't be like clean top to bottom every day. Sure. But um, every other day probably, depending on um, what the animals have access to, where they've been. Oh, okay. Something like the habitat. Um, we don't go out and just rake all the time gotcha. because there's 11 acres out there. <laughs> you can't do that. Good deal. Um, well, we'll let you finish up. I don't want to keep it too long, but thank you so much for the invitation to come out. And yeah, I know it's like Steve, you're showing him pick up poop. It's part of the story. Mm -hmm. So I hope you forgive us for that. So you can finish up and <laughs> we'll go from there. Go into the compost stand. We're gonna dump some poop. Are you kidding me? No. Going to some compost. And, and we're gonna dump some poo. What's the next line? I don't know. Uh, well, we're kind of cheating because we're in the back. We're not really going out yet. We have to get in our vehicle first. <laughs> but so Leslie wanted to share that beautiful song with you. That was lovely, Leslie. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Stop, stop, stop. Wait, 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 wait. Steve. Hey, What's up? Keep with Jordan. How are you doing? Good. We're doing a really cool episode. Okay. For our, for our virtual guests, Ooh, cool. all about kind of food cycle here. All right. And we've seen some poop being picked up already. Yeah. And Leslie and I said, you know what? We really need to go over to Elephant. <laughs> because you guys, you guys pick up some poop. We do. We pick up a lot of poop. Do you know how much poop you pick up? We estimate it's about 5,000 pounds every day. I know. No, I know. 5,000 pounds. That's two and a half tons. It's a lot of poop. <laughs> That's two and a half tons of poop. That's a lot of poop. It is. <laughs> every day. And it's every day. Every day, yep. And we're, we're in the elephant habitat. Mm -hmm. Did you guys guess that? We're in the elephant habitat. And you guys were kind enough to set us up a little bit. So you guys take the poop that's here. Mm -hmm. Is it really five and a half? Is it really that much? That's what, you know, they wow. told me that when I got here, and I've never, the you know, word? put it on a scale personally, but I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that? How much is this one? <laughs> right? <laughs> That's crazy. Well, there are, how many elephants do we have? We have six. Six elephants. Mm -hmm. They're eating 200, 200, 300, mm -hmm. 400 pounds of food a day. Exactly. Half of that's coming back out, mm -hmm. and then all the water and everything else. Exactly. Know, it's crazy yep. cool. <laughs> all right. So thank you so much for letting us come over and sure. visit with you for a little bit. Um, so you take this and what happens next? So from here, we actually put it into a big dump truck and then we drive it all the way down to our big compost area. Oh, you guys take it uh, the big load down to compost. We do, yep. Mm -hmm. Any chance we could do that with you? Absolutely, sure. Let's go to compost, check this out. This is great. Well, so let you finish. Sure. And Leslie and I will meet you over compost. Sounds good. Awesome, thank you, Jordan. Bye. So it's really this? This is it, yep. Every day, uh, this full truck gets loaded, and then we also have a couple extra um, gator fools every day, too. Also, it's not just this. <laughs> heaven forbid, more. heaven forbid it's just the dump truck. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> wow, holy cow. And two more on top of this. That is so much feces. Now, is it, we learned earlier, is it also bedding? Or is this mostly feces? This is mostly feces, it yeah. Is. So pretty much um, what this is, is there will be some leftover hay in here as well. Okay. But usually they eat everything. Sure. Um, so it is pretty much just the waste. Wow, okay. We were getting ready to cut. It was like, Jordan says, do you want to see the dump truck? I was like, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, we're heading over to compost. Meet you there. All right, digital guests. You've asked for behind the scenes before. How's this? We're behind and in front. We're going over to the compost pile with Keeper Jordan in that big truck behind us.
And this is one of the first steps of the compost process here at the North Carolina Zoo. But this is cool. All right, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna pull over to the right. Keeper Jordan said, if you went to the right, she was just gonna dump it all right down here. How cool is this? Taking you behind, behind the scenes. Let's say I've never seen this part of it. <laughs> I've seen the remnants and the result, but I've right. never seen the end. Also, never seen. I've seen like sometimes port when they have a couple of things, but never an elephant. This is a huge drop off, a huge deposit. It is, <laughs> it is a huge deposit. Oh. Here it goes. All right, kiddos. And this is every day, Leslie. I bet multiple times a day, right? You're probably right. There it goes. Wow. And there's so much going on over here. We're lucky we get to talk to George in a little bit. Did I tell you that? Mm. Oh, cool. Yep. The compost guy. Yeah, he's gonna share some of the details of what happens with this product and how it's turned into the black gold right. around here, the compost. But this is where it starts, guys. So that food cycle kind of starts here and ends here. Uh-oh. That looks like an empty truck bed. I think she did a great job. How cool is that? And there goes Keeper Jordan. Bye. Bye, Keeper Jordan. And now we're here with fresh compost. Amazing. And this is going to be turned in to that compost that the zoo uses throughout the park. Amazing stuff. Awesome, this is so cool. So we're over here at the compost pile. We've seen them dump some of the end of the food process, shall we say? And we're over here at the compost. We actually have compost the material here at the zoo. We compost feces and all kinds of stuff. And I'm lucky enough today to have George with us George takes care, he creates this compost for our animals. For our animals, for the food process, for the zoo, moves all that through. But how does the process start and how does it work, George? Well, obviously the- uh, Tree falling back there. Result of a lot of food <laughs> going through the animals. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, about 2,000 tons per year is what we process right here. 2,000 tons? Tons? 2,000 tons. 2,000 pounds in a ton, right? Yeah, so 2,000 wow. times 2,000. Do the math. Holy and cow. No, I'm not going to do the math. It's too early. Horticulture adds about a quarter of that with their cuttings, but a most, too. Of it, okay. most of it is animal waste. Yeah. A lot of poop. A lot of poop. <laughs> a lot of straw with that, but... Uh, okay, sure. That makes sense. Just the elephant. The elephant group that we have right now do about two and a half tons per day. Man. Yes, that they're is the a star, lot of the material. Big stars of compost. <laughs> stars yeah. of compost, good deal. So you said it's feces, it's poop, it's um, straw. Anything else um, uh, from the zoo? The newest and greatest, you know, thing we've done lately is to add the food waste from the restaurant. Oh, is that what's over there? Yeah, there's. Some, I see it. Uh, Can let, Leslie's with us today. Some so. popcorn and some. Uh, well, actually, all the dinnerware and. The, oh, even the plates yeah, and stuff. Plates and silver. Uh, plastic forts and knives are compostable. Very cool. So they go into the mix too. Now I've been lucky enough, and I use that in the sincerest way, to have been here before to see how this works. I know that you take the, the raw compost, the raw feces, the raw yeah. straw, and you are actually literally turning that into compost. And that's over here, right? Yeah. That right there is about 10 days of material gather. Wow. So once a month, I have enough here that I can start what I call, or we call active windrows. 
So that's the windrow. And that's uh, one I started 10 days ago. And, and that's a thermometer? Yes. And you do that to keep that temperature up? Keep track of yes. temperature. I'm remembering, I'm learning. <laughs> um, the heat that's produced from the breakdown of materials is what's turning something that nobody wants. Oh, that's poop, that's waste. <laughs> I love that. Into what everybody wants, and that's beautiful soil amendment. I love compost. that. Compost, I love that. But turning something to waste is uh, good. This one was started 10 days ago. I've turned it four times. This has been turned four times. Yes. Leslie, can you show them the temperature of what's inside this? Yeah. Imagine, guys, inside this windrow, as George is just telling us, inside the windrow, there's all kinds of bacteria breaking down this, as George so eloquently said, the stuff you don't want. Yeah. Breaking all that down into the compost. And look at that temperature. So inside that pile, all that work going on, over 160 degrees. That's crazy. And that's where the steam is coming from yeah. because it's breaking everything down. Yep. That is so cool. They do all the work after I do my little part, <laughs> the fun guys. They, they don't do all, do all the work, George. We know <laughs> there's a lot of George work going on in here, bud. <laughs> but yeah, we do it together. It's a, <laughs> it's a teamwork. I like it. It's, it's team. Yeah. It's a tiny, tiny team to George and his machinery. Yeah. So we go from this and then what's the final product look like? Well, I is have that what's... some in my... Uh... Sweet main piece of equipment that I use is this front end loader. When I said I turn it, I'd literally take one step physically? at a time. And oh, really? No, I didn't know that. And basically make a new row out. You're literally lifting it. And every, I thought you were just pushing no, it. You're literally no. picking it. I didn't know that. Every uh, part of it is picked up with this bucket and made into a new windrow. Wow. And in that process, turning the inside to the outside and vice versa. No to kidding. Get and this it is all mixed up. And this is it, huh? Yep, that's the This is final. Factor. Leslie, you want some? Delicious. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> but this is I love I, I I really love when people say things I think so cool. You take the stuff that nobody wants. Exactly. You the, the poop, you take the the old bedding, um, food, dirty plates. Yep. And you turn when it into I, this. When I start out with uh, 2,000 tons that I receive in a year, I will get, after the whole process, 500 tons of this wow. finished. So a lot of course, breaking yeah. down, a lot of moisture coming out till you end up with about a fourth of what you start with. Wow. With this. No, okay, that's so Good cool. Good trade-off. That's you, so neat. And uh, we use every bit that we make here at the zoo. And one of the cool things that we do is use it in our browse garden. Right, yeah, we heard which, about that. That's yeah. so cool. So, and that's where the whole cycle comes from. Yeah, you know, this zoo is built on a mountain, sort of, <laughs> a mountain. Right. But the soil is, is it's rock and right. very, very poor soil. So we need amendments. Anything we do yeah. horticulturally, especially growing plants for animals, we want a right. good soil. So we build gardens using this. I love it. And it's all inside, guys. It's all contained in the zoo. So uh, as we saw when we first started, we grow food, we prepare it, we feed it, it's pooped out, it's cleaned up, and it comes back here. And then George does his magic yeah, touch, touch, literally yeah. rolling and turning it all in. So George, thank you so much for your time today. Yes. It's been awesome. Anytime. It's always cool to come over here and see this process. And guys, it doesn't stink. It really doesn't <laughs> smell bad. You smelled dirt before. If you go over there, it might smell a little I different. Say, uh, <laughs> smell what I but all of this is it fine. Smell over here, though. It smells closer <laughs> to where I yeah. the first step, where it's just the dump. There you go. <laughs> of, the, of the feces. <laughs> Again, George, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Check this out. Voila! Food cycle. Right? How cool. And it's all within the zoo. It's all done in your North Carolina Zoo. How cool is that? So we grow food, prepare diets, feed it out, animals poop it out, keepers clean it up, take it to the compost pile, make compost, use compost, grow food. This is an example of one of the places they grow food as well. This is to wrap it up. This is part of the browse garden. And we've seen that before. We had keeper Katie or Hort Tech Katie with us for a while. We've got tulip poplar, mulberry, you have to take my word for it. Tulip poplar, mulberry over there. Ili Agnes here, you guys might know Ili Agnes, one of the olives. 
you can imagine huge banana leaves. I believe it's wax myrtle over there. And, and why, the, why is it kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of brown this time right well, now. It is kind of brown now. This is not the season to be picking banana leaves. Gotcha. But, but you can do Iliagnus, you can do wax myrtle. So there are some, some, some things they do. So it's all done here though. And then we wanted to bring that to you guys. We've showed you compost, we've showed you cleaning, we've showed you keepers, shown you commissary. We wanted to put it all together in one episode for you. We hope you enjoyed it. Again, Steve's in front of the camera today. Leslie was behind. Hey, everybody. Awesome. Tune in again for your zoo adventures on Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. Stay safe. And check the zoo's website for any new updates on entrance and exit. What are you looking at? Leslie, what are you looking at? Oh, it went away. Oh, vultures. Nice. All right. Well, anyway, let's wrap this up. Bye. He's done. <laughs>